family members of the students because I think what the students have to go through, the, many of the family members go through also simultaneously. So I'd like to congratulate you all for this uh, very important day in the life of everybody. I was reminded of uh, an incident um, many, many years ago in the Lille University where I had to give not only the, I think, PhD, but uh, degree, but also the uh, examination was done almost one hour before, and the students, seven or ten of them were waiting. And uh, uh, when I uh, passed, uh, we, we were two or three of them passing the exam, the students came up uh, to receive their degree, but there was one person waiting, and he was the father of the student, and he was a baker actually, and he said, he couldn't speak English, and I couldn't speak very good French, but he conveyed that his son was the first person to have passed a degree from his family. And he was very happy and almost crying, but the, uh, as the as son was very much moved. So I think it's a very important uh, part of everybody's growing up and getting uh, a degree, which is a sort of threshold in the life. But what I would like to say is that the learning process doesn't stop after getting the degree. In fact, I would like to say uh, that the learning process starts after getting your degree, because I think that's very important. Um, uh, it has been said that architecture is a uh, art and science of building, but recently, in many years, we know art, science, and I would say commerce, I would agree, uh, can be part of it. So you will have to, not only what you have mastered a little bit of art and science, you would have to learn how to build, um, go through the commercial parts and financial parts of the building uh, very soon. We all had to go through that. Uh, another thing I think I would like to men mention at this stage, and uh, I think uh, for me that's been very important, that though it's art, science, and whatever commerce, but I think don't forget the humane values. I think that's very important, a part of our culture, of a civilization, I think we have to be very careful that whatever we build, wherever we build, and in whatever manner we build, we take care of the essentially humane values uh, for which I think, uh, I think we've given some kind of a promise. I think you can add that into your mind. With that, I'd like to show some of my work, a spectrum of my work, uh, and um, I think, I uh, don't know if the lights are on or not, but the idea is uh, to go through the process, I think, I think, yes. I'm just showing some of the buildings which impress me a lot. I mean, uh, I've gone to, this is of course Fatehpur Sikri, so I would like you to go, everybody, to see some of these buildings, the great monuments of uh, what are part of our uh, culture, of our, our civilization almost. And so I've just run through very quickly what has impressed me. I also was responsible for measuring some of these uh, things, and I hope in School of Architecture you still carry on uh, uh, measure, measurement, recording. I believe you are doing that. So this is uh, in Rajasthan, um, palaces, Jodhpur, etc. gone there many times. And this is a very impressive thing how sort of elements of design is fixed through, through architecture, planning, uh, landscape, they're all fused together. I think this is a very important part of uh, what I've learned. This is a temple in uh, mm -hmm. South India, and I think it's almost center, urban center of the city, Madurai, Tanjore. I think we have to visit all of them. Uh, I didn't visit them when I was a student, but when I became a professor. So after that, I got to, started measuring with students uh, lots of these things. And I think it's in that process I learned a lot of things. Now, let's say, I think uh, I run through uh, uh, Janta Mantar, 
which is very much a part of Delhi. And also you will see Sanchi Stupa, which you all know, which I visited yesterday evening. Maybe, I don't know, third or fourth time in my life. And it's very moving. It was in the evening. And to imagine that we honor one of the greatest Indian ever born, and how a little prakima when you go through, if you think about his, what he taught us, um, and how this little monument is so important. Now the left of one of them is, of course, the Latians dome. When the Latians started practicing in India, he said he wanted to build, uh, to show the Indians, um, and, and to impress on them the importance of Western art, science, and culture. That's how he started, very arrogant remark. But by the time he had finished, he had used, as you can see, uh, uh, some elements from Sanchi. I mean, this is eight or 10 years, and he, his wife mentioned that, that he had begun to understand a little bit of India by the time. Now, I'm showing a little bit of Corbusier because I think he introduced for my generation of architects at least what's modernism, what's rationality, and that rationality need not be dull or need not be just solving a problem. It has also a poetic elements in it. Sorry, I think I've run through very fast, but uh, I've come to one of my buildings. Uh, this is, uh, as many of you may have visited, unfortunately it has been demolished by a very, I would say, Philistine establishment, um, architecturally illiterate, and you have to uh, go through in your life, people like that, and to resist them. I think, uh, just a minute, it's a bit, I think, this goes very fast. <laughs> uh, All right, I'll just see. We will see it. Okay, uh, I think we run to one or two other projects which I'm not going to show. Is the Asian Game Village, uh, but I'm coming. Uh, this is the National Institute of Immunology. It's a very large project, and I'm just discussing with uh, the chairman, uh, who is a great urbanist. <laughs> and town banner and like many members of your faculty, I said that I think one of the great traditions in India is what is called epic architecture. I would use the word. These are large scale works which are done by one architect. So where you carry through a certain values consistently, it's like we have Ramayan, Mahabharat, and in recent time, uh, someone rushed these Midnight Children or, uh, or many other books, uh, Naipas, uh, uh, that they are large scale works. And this is a small model. In my office, we always make a, a lot of models, but you will see series of courtyards which run through to each other according uh, around a faculty and a seminar complex. Now these are uh, um, ho hostels for scholars, for professors and lecturers together. So what I considered that movement around these buildings is very important as much as the buildings. So you, you have a series of these uh, spaces which are created between the buildings and I think that's a tremendous contribution of historic Indian architecture. Now, is, this is the kind of buildings, how one uh, space leads to another bigger space, etc., and how the mass of different three or four or five different types are uh, uh, sort of fused together. Now, one way is that you repeat housing, one type, and this is something which I was very much against and which I never wanted to do. And to do different kind of building which kind of become clusters, but they kind of merge with each other and together they form another layer, another, uh, let's say, another form. So it's not only one building, but several of them together. And I think I learned that lesson particularly from Jaisalmer and cities of Rajasthan. And actually, if you go through Bhopal, old city, you have some of these values. 
Now this is how spaces are created, the entrance gate which leads to a place in this case actually a, a, a cafeteria and the little arch opens up and gives light on the table of the faculty. So this is the kind of smaller spaces which are built within this building. This is what has always been intriguing uh, for me and I was very happy to see with one of the faculty members uh, what God Palace, what he had reconstructed, which had something similar values, a small courtyard which lead one from the other. Uh, this is a drawing for it, um, how it is conceived, three or four different elements together. This is the small spaces which are within it, where students can sit down, and the how eventually the buildings merge with landscape. It takes a lot of patience. It took about almost uh, 10 to 14 years to see how plants grow up. So you have to uh, have, as an architect and designer, patience, but also carry your clients with it, or the people who are using it. Okay, please preserve with that what we have designed, that you must sort of carry on with those values. I would very much uh, like students, professors, faculty members, if those who have not seen it to see the NI because it is, uh, maybe it's taken 14, 15 years, but it's now sort of well preserved in its own sort of way. Now, structurally, I was keeping, uh, um, as you can see very carefully, the elements of design, uh, the sandstone, beige and um, red color, uh, to denote structure of the building. But these are small courtyards. This is done, believe it or not, the same amount of money which the CPWD was giving for the similar quarters. I was told by the head of the faculty, uh, uh, Dr. Talwar, he said, look here, uh, do what you want. Your full, uh, uh, full liberty, one thing, you don't exceed the cost, the, what is given to us. And I, when I managed to do that, the CPWD said they would not agree, they said it's not possible, but I said 10 to 15 percent of your money which is siphoned off <laughs> elsewhere is within the design element that we have been able to use permanent finished elements. So let's say after 14 years these buildings still look very well, I would say. This is some of the, you can see, volumes. Uh, now, the idea of penetration of spaces from one gate to the other is carried through. Uh, I'll rush through this fairly quickly, but you can see a small amphitheater because these are spaces which utilizes the, what are the elements already lying on the ground. A small amphitheater, it's, uh, and the rock was already there. So these are some of the plans. I'll just very quickly go through. Uh, these are professors' housing built around the kocha and you can see this section, uh, double height, uh, living room, uh, one prof um, professor's but the other. So it becomes a kind of a cluster and these are the kind of volumes and spaces which you see within the buildings. I think for me, the how to use light because we have a very strong light. It took me, after having studied in England and worked in France, a few years to understand how the light has to be utilized in India. I mean, how it's very important that it is diffused, that becomes part of the, uh, that you walk through in it. And now, I think the old cities have that. I mean, you go through, it may be, temperature may be touching almost 40, but it's still very cool. So this is the kind of thing I was able to reintroduce uh, in this building. Now, you can see this cluster, it's very closely packed together. You can see the units are leading from one to the other, almost as you can see here. Now, I'm uh, very happy to show this particular uh, image that there is a series of four or five or six courtyards uh, which are linked together and the whole uh, institute is actually eventually a one institute. It's not a series of buildings, 
though they are different, and I think that's a very important part when you are doing an epic, that is a chapter, first chapter, uh, Mahabharata has so many stories which are linked together. That's not done from one end to the other. So I think similarly in this epic works, the buildings are fused and linked to each other in a manner, but they are changing in it all the time. So actually the gateways which you see are kind of chapters opening up uh, sort of stories or if, if, I, if I may use the word for architectural language, one type of buildings to the other. You can see here, now, um, I think the, the element of having utilized uh, what's called sandstone grid, I had to almost invent it for the first time, use it in the sandstone to, it's a kind of plaster unit and so it's a, in a way in situ uh, uh, unit, so after about 20 years they still look quite good. I think this is very important that we use permanent finish in the buildings. You can see the again quality of light and you can see the passages through the buildings. Now, I'm very particularly proud of this particular unit of housing. This is basically was designed for the chaprasis or the peons of the, uh, for the housing. And uh, doctor, uh, I said, I'll use exactly the same finishes what we've done for anyone. No class hierarchies on this thing. Though they, these are smaller units, and actually, eventually, the students said, we would like to stay inside.